So uh, this is the F test, and the F test it measures the statistical significance of the entire regression as a whole. This is for the F test. You guys remember the F test? This is the F test, right? So here is the number. Uh, so it looks uh, it look at the whole uh, regression. Steps for analyzing regression results. Uh, we will check the coefficient signs and magnitude, uh, and then we will compute the elasticity, uh, which will tell us you know how sensitive this number is. And we want to determine the statistical significance. So let's look at this coefficient sign. This is the coefficient, and these are the signs. So this is negative. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, a positive, positive, positive. Uh, here, if we take uh, compute the elasticity of coefficient, which is this number above one or below one, remember, and then uh, determine statistical significance. That's this number. Okay, p value more or less than 5%, okay? Textbook examples, we have the prices of pizza. Uh, this was an excellent job done by Muharram when he explained the chapter. He put all the figures and the, put it on the example and he actually ran the statistical and we got the results. Managers can be expected, uh, you know, prices decreases to lead to lower revenues. And also we looked at tuition and locations were not significant in the example. Uh, what are the challenges with regression? Is regression always great? No. Sometimes regression can be uh, very difficult to identify. Sometimes uh, we may have this multicollinearity. When the numbers coordinate together uh, or correlate together, then the multicollinearity uh, does not help you explain. And we looked at the example, if you put tuition and income on the same table, then they correlate on a high level. Then they basically distract the regression. So what do you do? You remove one of these. Or maybe use other advanced statistical methods, let's say factor analysis. And then autocorrelation when you've got some built-in uh, uh, correlation between what you're uh, uh, forecasting and what's uh, uh, dependent and independent. So these are the challenges. Forecasting. Forecasting is very difficult, but not very difficult with a lot of information. Remember? Uh, especially into the future. Now, if we want to see what's going to happen tomorrow, uh, some people say uh, it is difficult to say what's tomorrow. We talked the other day about the movie, right? Uh, the sell short or the uh, uh, short run, or uh, where basically uh, there's a lot of crisis happened in the world. People did not predict them on time. So to show you that forecasting is not always happening. Common subjects of business forecasts are uh, gross domestic product, uh, uh, you can see if you look at Yemen uh, domestic product, you can see whether it's going up or it's going down. Uh, if you take any country, you almost can predict what's going to happen in the next future. Consumption also, how much people are spending, are they more or less? Uh, producer durable. So there are some things that is uh, more uh, feasible on a, uh, on a gross domestic uh, level. On an industry level also, you can expect sales of a particular product uh, in total for the entire market, you can have an idea. And then sales of a specific product. Good uh, forecast uh, should be consistent with the other parts of the business. Uh, you base it on the knowledge of relevant past. You consider economic and political environment as well as change. Uh, it needs to be timely. For example, we talked about if you forecast you know, student grades, do you think we're going to be reliable to some extent? You know, you can be, you know, very good uh, uh, indicator. Uh, let's say for a university, do you think it's easy to predict uh, future students or further uh, courses? We know that these people will pass. We know 5% will always fail or take the class again. We know 15% uh, always run, flee. So we've got these numbers on averages. So uh, we looked at the example from the oil industry. You almost know it's going to decrease and it actually decreased. So there are things that is, can be very obvious, but when you do the measurement, it gives you some sort of direction, magnitude. Uh, it kind of help you, know, help you make a better informed decision. You know where you are, you know where you're going. So we're not talking about you forecast, you know, is tomorrow going to be raining as much as, you know, uh, we know that in this season it's going to rain and we can forecast, you know, is it going to be, you know, more or less or the same or, do you see? Uh, well, here are some other forecast techniques, uh, expert opinion, opinion poll, surveys, uh, and uh, what happened here? And some of the things that serve like uh, 
So, uh, opinion polls, market research, uh, surveys, economic indicators, projections, and econometrics models. Which one of these you understand the most? Which one? Why would you... Which, Which one? Opinion, opinion polls. Opinion polls is very easy. You go, you ask people. Do you guys remember in election time, uh, people will take these random numbers, they call them by phone, they tell them, hey, who are you going to vote if, uh, if elections were tomorrow, based on all current information? Then they say yes or no, and they do this automated system. It automatically calls you, you just get it. Press one if you will vote for this, press two if you will vote. And then they take these numbers, they get the standard error, take a number of uh, degrees of freedom on all of these graphs, and they uh, give you the results that based on this. And they always make mistakes, you see. But on the other hand, you know, if you're a, a restaurant manager and uh, you get all of your customers says the food is bad, and you know the food is bad. Sometimes you don't really need to do the pool. Sometimes you want to see, uh, you know, uh, what is the overall perception. Or, so there's a lot of uh, good things and easy things about these. Uh, which one of these is the most difficult in your opinion? The econometrics. Econometric models, when you build a sophisticated model, you do a regression analysis and you do it a prediction. This can be an econometric model that says, uh, you know, uh, quantity equals uh, 3p plus 25p squared, and then uh, you use that to do further analysis, like what we have seen in the other chapters. Projections. Projections is what you, th you know, your projections, uh, you, you kind of estimate as uh, projection, do what? So here when you see there is maybe a trend in the market, everyone loves, all of the people are, uh, there's a lot of data that shows that there is a need for, so uh, projections is, uh, you, you can see the trend, maybe a target method when he says I will look at it with my eye, so that can be maybe an example. All right, let's go through each one of these. Uh, we've got here the qualitative, and this based on judgment expressed by individuals or groups. Quantitative based on significant amounts of uh, data and equations. So uh, naive, uh, that's forecasting projections without explaining future trends. So here we've got some information. It's not really explaining what's happening in the future, rather of, you know, uh, uh, what is happening. Casual is explanatory. So you can use this to explain. Let's say, for example, uh, sometimes if I do a regression analysis and I use some information, I might find out that when it rains, people do well in the exams, okay? Maybe that's true. You run the regression, you get it significant. It rains, people do well. Maybe because when it rains, you know, uh, people stay home, and when they stay home, they don't know what to do, and then they start. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Do you see? Uh, so, expert opinion, you get a jury or executive opinions. You generate by a group of corporate executives assembled together. So that's maybe when you do a conference, you bring a few uh, group of people who are experts in this topic. They, uh, they, uh, yeah, it will be maybe qualitative. You ask them what they think, and uh, you can also do it where they, you know, you you quantify it if you want. The Delphi methods. That's when uh, you get uh, expert opinions and use a series of questions and answers to obtain it where experts do not meet. So the key word here in a Delphi method is that you ask a lot of people who are experts. And they don't meet, but they all agree on the same conclusion that we're going to see this uh, specific uh, 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 thing in the future. Uh, opinion polls, a sample population surveyed. Uh, you might identify changes in the trend. Your choices of samples is important. If you do an opinion uh, poll, you want to check who are these people. You want to survey students. You want to survey uh, females. You want to survey... Uh, and then uh, where you get these people, how you get them, where you find them. Questions need to be simple and clear so people understand the question and they can answer. Probably, you know, when you prepare for your research class, they'll start to look into this. Uh, marketing res market research, it's uh, closely related to opinion polling and will indicate not only why consumers, uh, but also who they are, uh, how they use the product, characteristics uh, that uh, the consumer thinks are most important in the purchasing decisions. So market research can tell you what people intend, what people like to in the future, what they are plans to. Surveys of spending plans, yield information about macro type data relating to the economy like consumer intentions, 
uh, we've got some of these surveys, uh, some universities, conferences, and also if you can do inventory and sales expectations. For example, uh, you know, every year we sell a million mobile phones. How much next year we're going to sell mobile phones? You know, maybe we know, uh, you know, we've always had a million. Economic indicators, we've got the leading uh, co uh, coincidence and the lagging indicators. And this is a barometric method of, uh, of forecasting uh, designed to alert businesses to changes in the conditions. Uh, composite index, one indicator along may not be very reliable, but a mix of leading indicators may be effective. So maybe if we see employment rates are increasing or decreasing, that can be an idea. But maybe if we look at consumer price index, uh, we also look at exchange rate, uh, prices of uh, oil and gas, uh, these can also give you an indication. It can tell you about what's going to happen, what is happening now, or what has already happened. We talked about the leading, something that is going to be in the future. Uh, and then uh, coincidence, something that is happening now, so you can see it. And then lagging, something that already happened, but we didn't maybe know or wasn't sure. But now we can see the results afterwards. And then economic drawbacks. Uh, else. Uh, next we've got the trend projections. It's a form of naive forecast that projects trend from past data without taking into consideration reasons for change. Uh, compound growth rate, visual time series, lead square times. Are you guys okay with this? Uh, do you have any questions on this so far? Do you want me to stop on any one of these topics? Yes. Which one? No? Uh, let's see, compound uh, growth, that, do you know what we mean by compound? You know, it's more, you know, uh, faster growth, uh, forecasting by projecting the average uh, growth uh, rate of the past into the future. So if in the past we're growing 10% every year, so maybe we continue on uh, the same growth or more or less. When I say compound, uh, The idea of compound is this idea of a power N. So every time we have a power N, you know, it's not every year we're doubling, it's rather, you know, uh, uh, if we're going on a power level. So this is the equation we looked at. So it's, it's more or less like taking the average of the past years, the growth of the past years. Now remember the problem here, we have the ending, uh, uh, the final value, and we have the beginning value, and then we divide them, and then we take that number, uh, and then we take the, what is it, the square root to the power of n in order to get the amount of uh, n. Uh, as if you want to find i, if not, then n is how much every year it's growing. So the idea of compounding, remember interest rates, and then they compound, same idea. Uh, visual time series projections, that's when you see it on a graph, okay? Uh, we've got here an example which is constant uh, compound growth rates. So sometimes you can see here there's a growth, but sometimes if you just take the first and the last, then you lose this. Uh, so sometimes it's better to see it with your eye. Okay. So an example which the constant compound growth rate approach would be misleading. So if you look at the first and the last and you ignore what is happening in the middle, you will not see this. You see, so if you only look at the first and the last, you basically ignore this area here. So the constant is misleading. This constant, this yes, if you do it constant between the first and the last, it becomes misleading. No, you need to see the graph to see it better. That's, you know, target method becomes sometimes it's better because you can see it, you know, it's growing and it dropped. And instead of you just do the numbers and you don't discover uh, what's going on, okay? But you can eliminate the last point. Yeah, you can just eliminate the last point. Or maybe you need to explain why the last point dropped. Maybe like wrong measurement. You know, maybe it's a mistake in the measurement. Perfect. Okay. Uh, time series, uh, it's a naive method for casting from past data by using least squared statistical method. So least squared statistical method, that's when you take the best fit to identify trends, uh, uh, cycles, uh, seasonality, irregularity, movements. Are you guys okay with this? 
uh, time series it's easy to calculate doesn't require much judgment describe the best uh, possible fit for past data usually uh, reasonably reliable in the short run and this show you that you know it looks you know this is like in a graphical uh, mode uh, in a functional uh, mathematical how it will look like you want to see the trend uh, what is uh, uh, cyclical what is seasonal and what is random and all become a function of all of these uh, seasonality it need to identify and remove any seasonal factors uh, using a moving average so we talked about the best uh, we talked about the example for how much you spend per month right some people they spend per week so every week if you take the total you can see the trend whether it is increasing or decreasing some people you need to take it per month you take all of your spending per month you take the total and you take every month and you can see whether it's increasing or decreasing but if you take it per day it will be more like this and you don't know whether you're increasing or decreasing and you remove seasonality by dividing data by seasonal factor and here we've got the time series component uh, trend uh, straight line exponential quadratic this is if you want to put it in uh, graphical uh, in a mathematical equations time series component uh, cyclical random uh, isolate cyclical anything that is cyclical on a cycle you want to isolate it right for example uh, we, we talked about how much you spend per month you know every day you go on a cycle maybe you spend more at the beginning of the week less at the end of the week but the total will be you know what is important so you remove that a random factor cannot be predicted and should be ignored anything that is random like suddenly you have this much money you need to spend you remove it uh, smoothing you get a moving average so uh, so if you want if you have your monthly expenditures you want to get the average per month if you do the average per month then you will be able to get a smooth uh, this month is increasing from month to month to the other because you're taking the average for a full month or a week an exponential smoothing that's if you want to take more consideration of information that is more recent compared with anything that is old we said the example was what you know how much money you are uh, spending per month or per week you look at it now one year before maybe before one year it is not relevant so you will not take that as serious before you get your current job maybe it's not very uh, important so that's not going to be part of the, stu the study uh, moving average you take the number of days you divide it by the number you take the average forecasting for next period and actual value for the expected uh, exponential small thing you use this equation axiometrics model you build a very sophisticated model okay and uh, this can be a sophisticated model where you put the variables and uh, you put them in an equation and you kind of use it to forecast the future maybe what we have seen in chapter six right maybe that works sometimes there's a model that says uh, you know the total government spending will equal to how much is the total revenues minus how much the total this is the summary of this chapter regression analysis primary tool used by businesses to understand demand why do we use regression how much demand maybe you can also do other things with regression reliable input data proper estimation evaluation uh, are needed uh, forecasting is important activity in many organizations and businesses forecasting is a necessity uh, this chapter summarizes the discussed six of the major forecasting techniques by a business uh, all right this is the end of this chapter